And this is what we need. American Monetary Act provisions. Again, this is the American Monetary Institute, uh, for which I have a great deal of respect. They don't know I'm here. Um, <laughs> if they did, they might complain. But, um, <laughs> but the, this is it. Monetary reform is achieved in three parts. And that these should sound familiar, and we should think about them. Incorporate the Federal Reserve System into the Treasury, where all new money is created by government as money, not interest-bearing debt, spent into circulation to promote the general welfare, a monitor to be neither inflationary nor deflationary. You're back to that monetary authority. The monetary authority. The people's, communities, the states, the government's monetary authority. We're in control of the money system. The money system's not in control of us. Halt the bank's privilege to create money by ending the fractional reserve system in a, what he calls a gentle and elegant way. Well, if you're one of us, it's a gentle and elegant way. You know? If you happen to be Citicorp and uh, you've been making, uh, you know, getting your kids through college and their kids through college by the power that you have, maybe not so elegant. <clears throat> But here's a key that all past monetized private credit is converted into US government money. By that means that there's no loss to the people when the, when the conversion takes place. And that's, and that's kind of a key provision, and maybe that's why he calls it elegant. Banks act as intermediaries, accepting savings deposits, loaning them out to borrowers. What people think they do now. <laughs> that's what people think they do now. And then spend new money into circulation. And this goes back to, back to the problem that we're having in Vermont and everywhere, that, uh, that, that the economy has taken the downturn as a result of the contraction, as a result of the, 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 what I call the diseconomy of the day, and we're laying people off. We have no money to do, we have no money to provide the services that we need. We identify the services that we need. We have no money to do them. And it's going to get worse and worse. We're in the, de we're in the spiral. You know, like some economists call it the death spiral of, of, of debt. Um, and we're not there yet for anybody who thinks that this is like the bottom. If anybody watches CNBC and thinks that this is the bottom, it's not the bottom, okay? We have lost approximately $1.3 trillion worth of, of, uh, of, of debt. And that is to say it's, been, it's, it's, it's gone out of what at first was called two, 0.5 trillion, then 3 trillion, and just this week the International Monetary Fund says 4 trillion. So we're a 1.5 of 4, way to the bottom. And that's why they that's why they want to keep creating all these Even thousands in terms of toxic assets that moved through the system. That's right. That's right. These have been expunged, and we still have we still have that greater percent yet to expunge. How many people are going to lose their jobs? Now, how many people are going to not starve, but feel a great deal of pain and not be able to have their kids do whatever it is that they want their kids to do? And the answer, the answer to that is, is that we need to get it back. To spend new money into circulation on infrastructure. And I like the, I like the elegance of this. <laughs> including education and health care. Yes, education and health care are something that we invest in. That's the infrastructure. The, those systems are the infrastructure that keeps us alive. <laughs> Starting with the 1.6 trillion that the American Society of Civil Engineers estimate is needed, creating good jobs across the nation, reinvigorating local economies, and refunding government at all levels. And, and that's in the bill. That's in the bill. And when I say, if you go to the American Monetary, www.monetary.org, you'll see how they say that that, that would be done. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the solution that takes us back to the colonies. That's the solution that puts us back in control of our money system and, and makes sure that the benefits of prosperity go to those who create the prosperity, and that is the worker. Um, <clears throat> Before I get into that, you know, my, dad's, my dad, one, another one of the things that my dad said to me that really stuck with me is, 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 uh, is, is how he kind of corrected me about, about Karl Marx. You know, he said, you know, Karl Marx, not a big deal, you know. He said he didn't have it right about the money system. He didn't have it right about the economy. And, 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 and what did he mean by that? Well, if you read Marx and if you read the capitalists, 
And if you're Adam Smith, and Adam Smith and Karl Marx agreed here, okay? Adam Smith, anyone knows who he is, and Karl Marx agreed here. The economy is made up of basically three components. The natural resources that are there for us to use, human resources, us, uh, we take the natural resources, and the means of production. That is the means of taking those resources and turning them into things, okay? And my dad said, Joey, the day before the crash, we had all those things. We had all those things. Everybody was going to work, getting up, going to work. Everybody had a job. Everybody had a house. Everybody had a way to be. And the next day, it was gone. So what happened? Which of those things was missing? If the economy crashed, which of the three essential components of the economy was missing? And the answer was none. There were none of those things were missing. All those things were still there. The thing that was missing was money. The things that was missing was money. And so my dad says, the three elements of the real economy are natural resources, the people, and the means of exchange, the money system. That's the real key. And because Marx had it wrong, and, 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 uh, and Adam Smith had it wrong, we've been living with the, the tension and the struggle between those ways of, of, of thinking. And my dad said exactly that in 1975, testifying to the Joint Economic Committee of Congress uh, chaired by uh, um, um, Hubert Humphrey. My dad swears th that his testimony provided some basis for Hubert Humphrey's National Growth Act, uh, Full Employment National Growth Act of, of 1976. So this is what I'm saying. Right now, we continue down this path. And, and by the way, it's all variations on the theme here. It's all variations on the theme. I criticize every one of the economists that you, could, that you can throw at me. Even Naomi Klein, and Kuttner, all those guys, Dean Baker, all those guys. Krugman, all those guys. Wright, all those guys. I, I say they don't have it. Oh, there, there's, there's a variation on that theme, that same thing. We're headed for an unsustainable, unacceptable expansion of taxpayer-funded debts in the proposed solution to the debt crisis. We have a debt crisis. The solution is more debt. We're headed for crash. There's an available at least one option to the debt money extravaganza proposed by the Geisner Summers team of private bankers, and that is the Chicago Plan Friedman Framework approach represents the most readily available, achievable, I should say, solution to restoring soundness and stability. And if soundness and stability sound good, we really need to go for a money system that can get us there. And that one will not do it. Never. Never. We will run faster and faster and faster, and we will never get there. So lastly, our rec my recommendation. Promote the principle of economic stability as the underlying tenet of monetary policy. Remember, back to the <coughs> Chicago plan, what's the purpose? The purpose is to get back to the colonies, that's the purpose. Call on, I, now here's this my plea, you know, I, you know, because I get to go out there and float around with Pete on Kettle Pond, you know, I get to come back here and talk to my friends from Vermont and, and, and anybody that, that can come here, even some of uh, uh, my former workers at, at uh, Hardwick Electric Department who came all the way down here because they're saying, what is Joe talking about? <laughs> and, and they came down here to hear what, what I was talking about, and I thank you very much for being here. But, I've, but because of, of that, I'm taking the license to call on the Vermont congressional delegation to support the efforts of Congressman Dennis Kucinich, because Congressman Dennis Kucinich has prepared and is prepared to uh, 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 introduce legislation to pass the American Monetary Act reform legislation consistent with the Chicago plan and freedom as economic stability, and that is to say, to end the private money system in this country. To end the private money system in this country. And that's my recommendation, and that's what I think that we should do. Vic, I don't know if we, if we have another slide here. Uh, no. Okay, so I've gone way too long. I apologize. <laughs>